All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how to identify the error of an unknown associated with a standard curve that you have. So oftentimes people make a standard curve, but they don't recognize that the imperfections in the standard curve will result in a, an error, and all they do is they use the error from their measurements and put that on to the error of the the unknown value or the, the resulting value that pops out. So, for example, if I have um, a situation here where I have concentrations of some chemical and I'm comparing the absorption values of those concentrations to make myself a standard curve that I could use a spectrophotometrically to determine the concentration of an unknown, for example. Well, let's insert a scatter plot here really quick to see our curve. Here we have our standard curve. Uh, you guys have probably seen this before, right? We add a trend line and we include uh, the R squared and the equation on the trend line there. So there is our standard curve for that trend line. Um, we can tidy it up a little bit here just quickly by... Actually, we'll probably have to reinsert that standard curve. But this here is our uh, the concentration of the copper sulfate. And, oh no, sorry, this is the absorbance. This is the absorbance of the samples, and this is the concentration of the copper sulfate here. So, all right, and let's add our trend line back on there real quick. Tidy it up a little bit more. Okay, so here, there we have it. So here is our standard curve. Now, if I go and make some measurements of an unknown, so this is the measurements of an unknown, and I should do it multiple times so that I get four values that I can take an average of, right? So I take this four, I take the unknown four different times, put it in my spectrophotometer, and these are the values, let's say, that I got out. So the average, uh, reading I can plot right here for myself. This would be the average of these values here. All right. And my error or my standard deviation, which I can use as my error, that one way of um, utilizing error can be your standard deviation. That's not um, an uncommon type of thing to do. So here my error, I'll use my standard deviation so I can write a standard deviation function here. We'll use the standard deviation of A here like this, which is fine. And now I can calculate the relative error of this value or this unknown value that I measured. So this is the value and this is the plus or minus 0 0.0018. That's an absolute error. But then relatively, that 0 0.0018 is, I could take this divided by my app, the value itself, and then multiply by 100. Okay, so now I have the relative error here, all right? And I can determine the concentration of the unknown, right? Because this is my unknown value. It was some absorption values, measurement of an unknown, right? This is the uh, absorption values that I was making. And I did it four times again, got an average. So this is my y value that's going to go into this standard curve equation here. Uh, and I'm going to solve for x, and that'll tell me the concentration that my unknown must have been. And that's what I want to solve for here. And now you can do this by, of course, typing in this value and saying, taking my y, and then you could subtract and you could type in the number 0, 0.00. Actually, it's it's a negative, um, negative 0, 0.00, but I'm not going to do it that way. I mean, you could go in and subtract this B and then divide by the M, subtract the, the intercept here, which is in the Y equals MX plus B form, this is B, and then divide by the slope, which is M. But I'm not going to do it that way I'm, because if there was a slight change in this, if I decided that this value was something slightly different, then that changes my slope. And then all that, that calculation, which I had done using these values, has to be redone. So I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do instead is use the line est function, 
which will generate this slope and this y-intercept for me, okay? And it also generates the error on the slope and the error on the y-intercept. Now, that's what's necessary to propagate your error here. So here, let's say this, this standard deviation that we calculated is the error on this measurement, right? And this is the average measurement, right? So this is the error on this average measurement. Well, after I put it into this data, can I just use this same relative error percentage or should I use a different relative error percentage? Well, it, it depends on the quality of this data. And what the line est function does is it determines the quality of that data, gives you an error on the slope again and on the y-axis. So we'll type that in now. So to do the line est function, I have to highlight these six values like this, a three by two, a two by three row, and or uh, an array, a two by three array. And there's other uh, more values you can get. You can actually do a, a five by two array, but the values that are given there are not necessary. You can find other videos to explain that sort of thing. So I'm going to start typing my function by after I've highlighted my array, array uh, just start typing line s and then double click on it. And now it's asking for the known y's first. So that is my absorbance here. And I just highlight those values. And then I put in a comma. And then it's asking for my known x's. So I highlight those values, put in a comma. <coughs> and if you don't use true here, it's OK. It's not a big deal if you do or don't use true. I, I have always done it, so I'll just keep doing it. But I double click on true here, and then a comma, and I double click on true again. Now, this true here shouldn't be used, the first true shouldn't be used if you don't think that you're going to have an intercept of 0, 0. All right, so if there's some reason why the intercept's not at 0, 0, then you shouldn't use that second true. All right, now, before I push enter, I have to hold down the control shift button on a PC, and then I can push enter, and then I'll get all these values out. Again, this is our slope. You see over here the y equals mx plus b. This is our m. This is the b right here. And then these are the standard deviations for the standard deviation for the slope here and the standard deviation for the y value here. Okay? Now, uh, here's my r squared value also that spit out. And this is the standard deviation of the y that we're not going to use. All right. So now, when I determine my concentration of my unknown, all I have to do is take this value, subtract my y-intercept, and now, whenever I make any adjustments to the standard curve, that y, and you know, this can be a template for future labs as well. So anytime I make any adjustments to the standard curve, um, this will adjust because it's not going to be linked to some numbers that I typed. It's going to be linked to these line s values that are spitting out based on these values that I have here. So uh, that minus the concentration of the unknown, or sorry, the the concentrate or the the um, absorbance of the unknown minus the y-intercept divided by the slope, and then that value should be the concentration of the unknown. Okay, and I'm just going to uh, whoops, I'm going to this value here. I'm going to type down as my concentration of my unknown also. So I'll just put an equal sign like that and have it report that value there. All right, now. With this information, I can propagate this error, this relative error or this absolute error, both, I mean, which are basically the same thing, um, depending on what kinds of mathematics you're going to do. I can propagate it through so that I can identify the relative error and the absolute error on this unknown value that I just solved for, the new un concentration of the unknown that I just solved for. Now, this is a little bit of a long equation, so I'm just going to copy it here and uh, paste it right here. Whoops. This, I, I'm going to go right in here. I'm going to paste it right here. And you can go through this equation and try to understand what's going on, but essentially, Whenever you combine errors together, so that's it right there. Push pause if you want to come back and see it. But whenever you combine errors together, it's like this. What you do is you take the, the error of one of the values and you square it. 
and then you add that to the error of the second value uh, squared as well and then that whole value there you take the square root of it and what that does is it propagates through the error of, I'm going to take the square root of this, there's a couple ways to do this, I just raise it to the 0.5 value like that. So when you when you're combining two values some way like if you're adding them together or subtracting them then this is how you combine the errors. If you want to so I should say combining errors through either uh, addition or subtraction, right? Because that is the method for combining errors through addition and subtraction. If you want to combine errors through multiplication or division, all right? If you want to combine errors through multiplication or division, it's very similar, but instead of the absolute error, you need to be sure that you're dealing with the, the relative error because the, oops, scoot that over a little bit. You need to be sure you're dealing with the relative error, the percentage error, because they're not the same units. And so you just take the relative error first, and then you square it, take the, add it to the square of the other relative error, and then take the square root of the whole thing, and that will be the combined error. So basically, what this equation does here is the first step on solving for the concentration from this unknown value was subtracting the y-intercept. So we combined the error on the y-intercept, which is right here, with the error on this value, the absolute error of both of them, uh, in this manner right here. And that's the first part of this equation right here. And then... The next step is to divide the value by our slope, right? So we again, we took the unknown measurement, subtracted the y-intercept, and then divided by the slope. So now we have to combine the new error with the error associated with the slope. But before we do that, because this is now a division problem, we have to com re uh, convert it to convert the errors to relative errors. All right. So to convert the errors to relative errors, you need to take the error, the absolute error, divided by the value and multiply it by 100, and that'll give you the relative error. Now, to the value that we're going to divide by here and multiply by 100 is the difference between F2 and D8, where F2 is the unknown value here, and D8 is our y-intercept, because that's what we did for the first step. We just took the unknown value and subtracted the y-intercept. So to convert the error that we calculated initially to a uh, uh, relative error, we divided it by the result of F2 minus D8, multiplied by 100. Now, that's in a relative error here. Um, so we can square that error, this new relative error, and add it to the square of the relative error on the slope. And so after we're done, we can just take the square root, and that, again, will give us the relative error of our concentration. The absolute error of the concentration, it's easy enough, but I'll copy the data here just to save a little bit of time. The absolute error, again, whoops. Let's try that one more time. Right, just taking the <coughs> relative error, multiplying it by the value, and multiply, or dividing it by 100. All right, so there you have it. You have propagated your error through. Now, if we explore this a little bit, we see that our initial error was 0.25% relative error, but after propagating it through this standard curve, it goes up to 0.66% relative error. Now, uh, again, if we're going to talk about absolute error here, this is a standard deviation, or if we're going to express this value in the correct number of significant figures, right? There's three significant figures here, and there should only be one, or so there should be three significant figures here, 0 0.0528, and then this error can only be expressed to the uh, 0 0.0528, expressed to the, uh, let's see, the tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths place. So, yeah. All right, so pay attention to the, to the significant figures that you can, you can use there.
All right, was, there's one other thing that I wanted to show. All right, and the last thing I wanted to show is how if this data is poorer, so the data here is pretty good, but if the data in your standard curve is not very good, so let's change some of these values, maybe let's make this 0.16, all right? So as this data uh, gets worse, then your relative error, which again started off as 0.258, can quickly go up. So here we're at 4.5% relative error. So this is a nice calculator here because you can put your value in here and put your, uh, put your unknown that you've uh, collected, put your standards that you've collected in, and find out what your resulting error is going to be. And if that's too high for yourself, then you can begin to increase or improve the values here. Increase the number of them or improving them here. Another way is to increase the precision here, but you see that if this precision starts off very well, 0.25% relative error is very good, uh, it can't really compensate much if the values, the, the, the data is bad here. All right, hopefully that helped you with something.